lot of people are going to come out and they're going to criticize these strikes, especially in this current time. And there is conversation going on uh, within within the, the strike community about whether we should be striking at this point or not. You know, whether we should just buck up and, and fight through and, and try to try to use, levy our our strengths over to the courts. Do we do we try to, to shift the conversation on on a, on a federal level? Um, do or or do we fight for solidarity in a different way? Is striking even the right thing to do in in the in the face of a global pandemic? Or is it is it the perfect time to do it because it's gonna it's gonna really show people uh, how important we are, how important the worker is, and 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 again this notion of hierarchy is not really that important. That's really another thing that, that you know, the, the veil is going to be lifted off of people's eyes. So the question is, can a general strike work? Um, now, we've seen a lot more national level strikes. Um, in 2019, we saw a bunch of them. We saw a, a, on, on a global level, we saw a bunch of national strikes that were focused on one industry at a time, right? So uh, we saw the teacher strikes, we saw factory strikes, we saw the Yellow Vest movement, um, where even the Yellow Vest movement, I believe, was calling for a general strike in France, right? They were calling for a general strike in France. And <clears throat> really, the, the question um, is, like, and then, and then also to, to kind of bring it together, is the, the big general strikes we saw the ones that we've been talking about the last couple of days um, and in this video itself is all of those general strikes were focused on a city, right? So you had the 1919 Seattle general strike. You had the 1919 Winnipeg general strike. You had the 1934 San Francisco general strike, right? So how do we take these ideas of a, of a, a more focused national um, strike of like healthcare workers or teachers and factory workers and iron workers and all that stuff and the whole country goes on strike with that um how do we take that notion and mix it with the general strike so the whole country goes on a general strike itself can that even work can that even how, how would how would we achieve something like that because i think if if we're going to really shift the dynamic course of the the, the way that economics is talked about the way that that human rights is applied to this to this unfettered capitalistic system we're going to need a complete paradigm shift. And I think if we do a general strike, it's going to, it's, it, I mean, it's going to make a dent. <clears throat> so how do we combine these ideas? There, there are a few people that have talked about it. There's a couple of, um, you know, sort of these uh, pro worker socialist papers that I uh, have, have, uh, looked into, uh, which I feel like that, that sentence shouldn't fucking surprise anybody. Like if it does surprise you, they're like, what? Krish is looking into socialist stuff. Like, you have not been paying attention to any of the words I've been saying for a while. <laughs> uh, so, what, what people talk about, you know, or, like, these are professional organizers that talk about this stuff. Um, I'm, you know, my, my, my goal and purpose, I guess, is to, to look this information up um, and, and through the noise of all of this stuff is, is to find focus and, and hopefully give you guys, you know, a, a more a concentrated bite-sized way of, um, of, 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 you know, lear learning the stuff and, and, and having some levity behind it through comedy. So it, it, you know, maybe, maybe the joke will, will stick and relate back to the information. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but, but these general strikes, the way that they describe it, operate the same way that a regular strike does. Uh, so all the rules are the same, right? Um, you, 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 you just have, you, it's just bigger is sort of the way that they do it. Uh, and one of the ways that you have to do it is you have to saturate the public with the notion of the strikes. So there are more and more, I think, independent commentators talking about the Amazon walkouts that we saw. There are more and more commentators, like, like independent commentators, uh, that are on YouTube that are on my level are higher. Most of them are higher, right? Like people like Lee Camp or Ron Placone or, or Jimmy Dore, um, you know, Anya Power and Pit. Like those folks are going to talk about these general strikes 
because that's what we need to do. We need to put it into the zeitgeist. We need to put it into people's mind that, hey, this is something that's good. This is something that's going to work. You don't need to feel shame uh, about um, not feeling good about your employer. You don't need to feel bad about that sort of stuff. So um, more, more of us are going to talk about it. Uh, more of the independent people, more of the people that are not on the mainstream network, right? We're going to keep talking about it. But you probably won't hear corporate media like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, any of the, any of the like mainstream candidates talk about it. You're not going to hear Trump or Biden talk about it or Nancy Pelosi or fucking Chuck Schumer. They're not on the side of the common working man. They're not on the side of the middle class. They've never been on the side of the middle class. If they were, they would have given $4.3 trillion dollars to the American people and not to the corporations, right? They would have taken a five, they would have taken that U.S. Treasury $500 billion and we can allocate it to whatever and put it into a public fund to, 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 you know, help people get groceries, help people get food, help, help cover lost wages um, because of the current situation they're in. But they didn't. They just decided that these companies are going to do trickle down, uh, which has been a, a principle that's never fucking worked, right? That's never been a pro worker idea. That's been a pro corporate idea take this money and do whatever the fuck you want with it maybe you'll trickle it down to your people maybe you won't i don't fucking know but here it is we gave it on the goodwill right so you have to keep talking about this stuff you have to keep talking about why why it's positive what we're trying to achieve with it right and and in terms of a general strike right now um some of the major economics problems that we are seeing is that there is such a wide income gap in this country. There is a major, major wide income gap in this country. We, have, we also have a health care problem in this country. We have an infrastructure problem in this country. Um, and what this strike would really do is go just beyond the workplace. And I think this general strike might even call out like some of the more systemic issues that we have. Because those systemic issues funnel right back into the workplace. So we have to keep talking about these things and put it into the forefront of all this. Um, and that's part of the next thing, right, is, is urgency. Uh, is, is how urgent is it? For a while, I think a lot of people didn't think this was that urgent. You know, oh man, Obama's in, in office, right? He's, a, he's our first black president. That's awesome. We did it. We fucking nailed it, guys. Everything's going to be fixed. And it's like, no, 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 everything's not going to be fixed. It's the same thing with Bernie. It's, it's a concern that I have if we got a Bernie Sanders presidency, that everybody would go back to that moment of complacency and just sit around and be like, Bernie's got it. Don't worry about it. We don't need to take to the streets, you guys. Let's just relax. Let's just fucking relax, you know, is we really need to, we really need to make this a ride or die moment. And, and I think we're approaching that at this point. Especially with everything that we're seeing in, in this global pandemic. You can see that. The, the system's not working. The structures in place that, that a lot of people have given their, uh, you know, their, their faith to and everything. It's not working. They're not working anymore. Um, you know, like I mentioned, the economic divide is huge. The health care gap is huge. There's just tons of people that don't have health care. So even if you get, like, if we're going to talk specifically in the context of, um, of COVID, like, if you get, if you, if you feel the symptoms of it, and you, and you don't have to feel the symptoms of it to have it, right? Like, you could be asymptomatic. So, you know, you, you're asymptomatic. You don't show the symptoms, but it's still there, you know? So, and then in two weeks, it's just boom, it happens. It's like, holy shit, how'd this work out? Um, if you can't get tested because the test costs $150 and you're at home and you're self-employed and you're not making a total income right now, which there's like a ton of people doing that, uh, there's, there's like over 3 million people applying for unemployment right now. So over 3 million people that just can't, can't afford the test, see if they got it. I mean, that's a healthcare crisis. On, and on top of that, we don't have enough ventilators because this is an upper respiratory disease, right? So the people that do have it that need to be taken care of need to, not, need to fucking breathe. <laughs> it's kind of how a human body works. And you have corporations that are like, oh, oh, you need to breathe? Okay, how much? 
how much is breathing work to you? Can we put a dollar? Is it, is, is it worth $100? What about 200 Would you say breathing is worth $200 to you? Oh, it is. Oh, it, you know what? We just increased the cost of breathing to $500. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm getting notice. Yep, it's $1,000 to breathe. If you want to breathe, it's $1,000. Like that's, so that's a problem. And now we can fight for it to say that you can't do that. You can't just price gouge because you know that there's a pandemic and people need to do this kind of stuff. Complacency is the enemy of the revolution, people. Don't get too comfortable. And by no means am I saying that you shouldn't enjoy a little bit of comfort in your life, right? When things are going good, when we have a win, we can celebrate that win. You know, like certain things, certain aspects we win, but that doesn't mean that the fight's done. That means that we have to carry the work forward. The work of the revolution is never done. The work of the work of fighting for your rights is never really done because you're always going to have these people in a power structure that, that don't want you to have that, that, that want it all for themselves. That's what, what we're really fighting is greed here. And that is a that is a very long battle. We're, you're, we're fighting an ideal, uh, an ideological battle. You know, so and that's that's a lot of that comes from from mind changing. I think what we need to get used to for a little while is that we're not going to be in comfort for a while. If you really want things to change, if you really want things to progress, we are not going to be comfortable for a while. We're going to have to accept that and we're going to have to get comfortable with that discomfort. What we all need to come together. okay? What, what we all need to do is we all need to come in solidarity with each other, right, is, is because it's very easy to divide us. Um, and what we all need to realize is that we're all victims of the elites. That's what we are. You know, we're, we're all victims of those bosses, right? Like that's, that's how most corporate things operate is you got to suck up to the boss. You got to, you got to bribe them, you know, it's like, oh, look, I bought you candies. <laughs> Don't fire me, <laughs> please. You know, like, Blue collar workers, white collar workers, low middle income, all races, creeds and identities. We're all part of the middle class, the newly employed and even the retired. The retired now depend on uh, on on these bosses, too. Right. Because their 401ks are tied into the market. And if the market's not saved, then there goes their retirement. You know, so. So we're all connected. We're all we're all tied together. The other thing that we need to um, really focus on other than, you know, the, the urgency and the solidarity aspect of it to make the, to, to get people to be on the side of this general strike, this this national general strike that might need to happen is the morale of the worker. We have to overcome this no, this this fear and discomfort. OK, and here's the thing. Most of us are living in discomfort. Most of us don't, you know, ha like we, we just don't have all the comforts that we probably should, right? There's that notion in capitalism that if you work a full-time job, you shouldn't be in poverty. That's why people believe in capitalism. That's why people want to, that's, that's why they, 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 they fight for it so much. They champion for it. They go, well, if I believe in the system and I work really hard, I won't be poor. But here we are, we're seeing people that, that, uh, that work two, three jobs that, you know, have an internship that bust their balls all fucking day to make pittance. And now the, the only thing the government can give us to help us out when we've been making a bunch of rich people a shit ton of money is twelve hundred bucks one time. That's that's fucking crazy. Right. So we've been living in discomfort. And if we want to um, not live in discomfort anymore, yeah, we're going to have to do a couple more things that are probably going to be a little bit little more uncomfortable. We can't keep playing by the games of the system anymore. And here's here's the reality, right? This is this is the big morale booster here. We fucking won before. We've won because of unions, because of the labor movement, because of the workers' parties. That's that's how we won by by being in solidarity with each other. That's how San Francisco won. What when did when did you really see uh, the elites start getting really really nervous in Seattle? When did you see the elites getting really, really nervous in, in Winnipeg when people banded together and they started working with each other, that when they started believing that these, that these, the, the, these working class union leaders, because the, the union leaders aren't, you know, a, especially in those days, weren't really like rich people. They weren't, they weren't some kind of oligarchs. They were people that were probably standing in the fucking the worker line right next to you. That guy was probably a union leader. 
you know? So this would be somebody sitting in the cubicle next to you. That's probably your union leader right there. That's how it should be anyway, I think. That's, that's part of the reason why, why they were doing so well. It's because these common people that understood the struggle because they were in the struggle themselves, they were running for it. And, that, and so they, they worked for, uh, you know, for, for better working conditions. They, worked for, they, they pushed for weekends. They pushed for the overtime pay. They pushed for 40-hour work weeks. So we've won before. We have all of these things because we believe in the, in the solidarity of the Labor Party, because we believed in the solidarity of the working class people, and we fought for these things. We stayed in that discomfort. So now what we're doing is, is we're fighting to close these loopholes, right? Because there are loopholes. So two jobs circumvent all of these things. Like having two, in, the, the need for two jobs and stagnating wages um, circumvents the notion of, uh, of a 40-hour work week, uh, of overtime pay, and really also weekends. Like most people don't, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people really have weekends anymore. Like I, I and this is by my own design, but you know, like I work every single day. <laughs> I like to take my leisure time every, you know, I like to go outside and take a walk and, you know, do some exercising here and there, watch a little Star Trek every once, you know, but I, and I dictate my own schedule, but I mean, I work seven days a week. It's a pretty constant work schedule to put out videos and be creative and do my writing and do video, do, do, do video editing, audio editing, you know, and put out my own content. But there's other people that work two jobs. I mean, they're going over 40 hours a week. Some people are working 60 to 80 hours a week, multiple part-time jobs. That circumvents all of it. They're not getting overtime pay. They're getting paid regular hours. That's not, that's not what the labor movement fought for. So now we're trying to close these loopholes. But we won before, so let's look at how we won and apply it to now, right? And, we're, and, and no more of this let's keep working for the weekend bullshit, Okay. We're not working for the weekend anymore. We're working to create a better future. That's what that... I'm, I'm rewriting the fucking song. <laughs> We're working for a better future. I'll work on a tune. I'll, I'll figure out a tune for it. You know, if, so, if somebody write a guitar tune, uh, D minor. Do it in D minor. Get, get me a drop D. Is that a thing? I heard about that. Is drop D. Do it in drop D. And, and we'll write working for a better future. Uh, and 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 make that a, a theme song. <laughs> and here's the key, right? Because a lot of people are going to come out and be like, "This is not the time for it, Krish." Right? We talked about this a little bit. This is not the time for it. This is a pandemic. This is not the time for worker solidarity. This is time for people to band together and do the right thing. Da da da. da. Uh, well, okay, I get it. This is already a tough time, and asking people to go on strike um, to fight for this cause is going to create a little distress, right? Like, how are people going to eat? How are people going to afford their, their rents and all that stuff? Is like, again, we're struggling with that as it is, and that's what we're fighting against. We're fighting to not constantly be in a state of struggle all the time. But how did the strikers in 1919 do it? How did the strikers in 1934 do it? How did the Black Panthers do it? Community organization. They did it because the communities got together. They did it because you had a bunch of people that were like, you know what, we got to feed these strikers. We got to take care of these, the, the garbage problem. And we're already doing it in this, in this situation. I have, I have a bunch of people, uh, uh, one particular, his name's Pierre Vachon. He's a very funny comedian in, in Vermont. Um, he's going out delivering groceries to, to, to families and elderly people, you know, wearing gloves and a mask. And he's out there, um, you know, delivering uh, groceries and, 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 and things that people need every single day. I, wa I, I watch him do it. You know, that's amazing. We're already doing it. We just need to take it to the next level, um, and, you know, uh, to, to, to show that, that we can run our own communities. That, that the powers that be don't actually control us. If this is a government represented by the people and for the people, then it should be, and here's how we're going to do it. We're going we're gonna to show you how, we're gonna, how, how to actually run a, a government for the people and by the people, right? Land, landlords are cutting rent. There, there are certain landlords that are like, don't worry about the rent, fuck it. <laughs> 
everybody's kind of in a, in a tough time. If you even if you there there was something I saw the other day where um, even if you have the money, hold on to it, um, and you know later down the line maybe we can do something about it. But right now, fucking take care of yourself, right? You have food banks. You have all of these community-based programs that now we can push ourselves into. Now we can start supporting those community efforts because those community efforts become very, very important. Um, and this, this right here, this community effort that, you know, like the Black Panthers survival programs, um, what happened in 1919, uh, you know, the solidarity, when, when all of their efforts fail, that's when that retaliation shows up. The community efforts really does spark a lot of it, right? It sparks a lot of it. Um, because it really shows the powers that be that we don't fucking need them. And they're scared because they don't really have any usable skill. Like, I don't think Chuck Schumer knows how to build a table. You know, like, I'm pretty sure he has, like, an intern or a boy to do it. You know, like, I think, I feel like Chuck Schumer is, is the kind of person that still says boy a lot. You know, and it's just like, what do I, what, if you put a screwdriver in Chuck Schumer's hand, I think he might have a panic attack and a coronary heart attack, but it's fine. He'll be fine. He has a Cadillac health insurance. He'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You guys don't worry about it, but that's when they freak out and they have to hold on to that to be like, well, we've already convinced these other people that, that they have to help us. And by helping us is how we're helping that, that they're getting help themselves. So, so if, if they just start helping each other, then what about me? Where, where, where do I fit into this community? And, and they don't really have a purpose because their purpose has become, um, uh, exploiting their exploiting power is essentially what it is. It, is it's just them become coming to this point of power and then just staying in that point of power without doing anything with, with that power. Like there's no benevolency with their power. And by going into community standards, we're just showing that we can be benevolent towards each other because everybody now is part of that power structure. It's not, it's not just one person is running that power structure. It's everybody in the community has to do their part uh, to run this community efficiently. We've changed the dynamics of, of what power is and that freaks them out because that's all they're good at. They're just good at, at exploiting people. <laughs> like they're not good at anything else. And, that, and, and if you think I'm wrong, uh, show me a picture of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Joe Biden, or Donald Trump putting together an Ikea fucking table and I, and that and and I will say that I might be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong if I can see that. Standing together means that we get the future that we want. It means that we can actually get to progress. That's that's what it really means, right? And that's what these community efforts would mean. That's what this general strike would achieve. So again, you know, to kind of recap what what it, what what it, what we need to do to make these general strikes work is one, we have to keep talking about what it is and why it's important. It, we, we have to keep talking about these things, right? What our quote-unquote list of demands would be. And, and I, I do think that it goes beyond the workplace in, in terms of a, a national general strike. It would, ha it would have to go into health, like getting, getting better health care, um, closing that income gap, making sure that, um, that, that rich people are attacked, making sure that um, we're not losing our social programs, um, why is healthcare uh, something that's more about profit than it is about health? Why is education um, more about profit than it is about knowledge? These sort of things are all should be part of our, our, our list of demands. And then the urgency of it. Um, why we need that as soon as possible, right? It's the same thing as the, wor the workers did in 1934. It's why do we need this as soon as possible? Well, people are, are, are dying. <laughs> Like, that's really what it is. People are fucking dying, right? So the urgency of it, it's ride or die. Um, and then solidarity comes in to play as well, right? We're all in it together. It can't just be that uh, this, this, is, this one aspect is important than the other aspect. We all have a part to play in our community. We all have a purpose in our community. We all need to come together and fight for each other in our community. So, so that might even mean that if, if we create that one big union... Right. We, we talked about the one big union earlier in this video. Um, if we have that one big union and then underneath that, you have the the metal workers union, you have the healthcare union, the teacher union, the artist union. 
there should be a representative of every other union part of all of these specific unions, right? So that way, like, we're, we're all talking to each other. We all understand what the other person needs, and we, we, we can be on a little bit more of an equal footing. It's more about uh, the purpose that you, that you serve to the community rather than the hierarchy in which you serve within the community. Uh, then it comes about morale. Uh, it's about knowing that we can win, you know? A bunch of people in the beginning in Seattle were arrested. That killed the morale. That killed the movement. Well, it didn't work in, in Winnipeg. <laughs> and that's just a few months, right? These people took to the streets. Uh, then there was violence. That, that kind of hit the morale a little bit harder. Well, that didn't work in Seattle. It didn't work with the Panthers either. It didn't work with the Black Panthers either. It didn't work with a couple different movements where, where they were violent towards them. And it was just like, all right, we're going to keep escalating it. So, and it's also remembering that we've won before, you know, uh, and then being organized as a community, making sure that we're all taking care of each other. So if somebody needs something from another person to be like, yeah, I got your back. I got your back. Don't worry about it. We're going to make it work. We're going to make this happen. This is, um, I'm, I'm stealing this quote from, uh, <laughs> from somebody here. Um, but I, I think that it is an important quote, um, and uh, I'm going to get the Sarah Nelson. Uh, Sarah Nelson is, part, pardon my delay, I should have probably prepared for this. She's a, she's a flight attendant union leader, Sarah Nelson. Um, and this is what she, this is, I think, a very important thing to keep in mind. Um, and uh, I'm giving credit where credit is due. Sarah Nelson, flight attendant, union worker, uh, union leader, sorry. Um, she, she says this, and I think this is kind of the, the important aspect of this the strike is our tactic solidarity is our power that's really big um, because yeah that's the that's the method of how we are going to achieve our change but solidarity is the power behind our change shifting that dynamic of of um of our leadership, shifting the dynamic of taking care of each other and what, what it really means to be a functioning society. That comes from solidarity. That comes from our support from each other. So um, that's very important. So again, the strike is our tactic. Solidarity is our power. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay-what-you-want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do, and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.